<laughs> no, we don't play with our miniatures behind the scenes. Not at all. No, we Why play with we? our miniatures in front of the <laughs> scene. <laughs> out, out in public for everybody to see. Because we just should. Uh, so hi, everyone. Welcome. It is Friday, which means it's time for yet another paint and slay. I'm V. Above me is Lauren. And I'm going to get myself Lauren. Um, and today we're going to be working on... Hold on, i got a cat here in my mouth. Oh, hair in the mouth. Today we're going to not be doing that again. Um, no. no, we're going to be working on finishing up the lizard folk render from WizKids D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line. And we're also going to tap into doing, as you can see uh, in the bottom here, we're going to be tapping into working on another mini uh, while we wait for certain parts of this particular mini to finish drying because, yes, there will be washes today. Um, but as we know, we got to have to wait for washes to dry before we move on to do other things to finish up the mini. Uh, but that is going to be the game plan for today. Lizard Folk Render, Tiefling Warlock. Okay. Um, and then we'll pick up with the Tiefling Warlock next week uh, for the 100th episode <laughs> yeah. of Paint and Slay next week. So it's yes, coming fast. It's coming fast. It's a thing that's happening. But before we get into chatting about all the fun stuff with, you know, a cool episode milestone next week, uh, in game, we have a couple things that are happening. Lauren, what's what's the story? Um, I just realized that there was something else I wanted to talk about as far as oh. stuff in game that I didn't say ahead of time. And so you don't have any stuff for oh, it. But that's no. OK. No, no, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But first off, Festival of Fools still going on. Goes until <laughs> Wednesday. Next I think Wednesday. we're in our last. Yeah, we're finally last in our last stretch. couple of days. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you've got, here's the fun thing that I found about Festival of Fools. So yes, absolutely, you want to unlock Dark Urge and Daddyus if you don't have them already. You want to get them geared up. You want to just have fun going through uh, their adventures. Here is the thing that I have enjoyed the most out of our first. Uh, events 2.0 mm -hmm. you get all these buffs from doing events 2.0 you from doing all sorts of stuff just by playing and those buffs work for everybody they work for uh or they work for everybody anywhere in any of your um in any of your games that you're playing so like Hey, have you had some problems going through some patron challenges? Mm. Have you had some problems doing like the next level of Trials of Tiamat? Have you, you know, any of the things that you're like, I just don't quite have enough power or speed or whatever. Now is the time. I have gotten more stuff done with my patron challenges and the uh, unlocking some of the, the patron stuff than I have ever. It's been super fun. So that is that is my tip. If you haven't thought about that, you, I'm probably speaking to the choir who know all about this. But in case you didn't, definitely take one of your parties out and try that thing that you've been struggling to do for a while. If you've got some of these buffs from Festival of Fools, you might be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So anyway, we've got that going on. Um, if you do have any feedback, since this is our first events 2.0, definitely come and let us know in all of the different places that you can give us feedback. I will go ahead and put the links to all the socials Shoot. in there, um, uh, which really includes... Quick, Lauren, it looks like the code may not be the code for this week. Chat oh, saying well... it's not processing properly. Well, poopy. <sighs> <laughs> let me see. Let me see what's going on with that. Uh, v, do you want to continue to talk about what's sure, going on? And I'll, I'll see if I, I can... I will keep going on with, with the fun stuff. So uh, along with our Festival of Fools wrapping up for the final week before uh, March 27th rolls around, uh, don't forget it is also the weekend coming up, which means we have our Heart of Iron weekend for the weekend buff. And uh, if you signed up and you're getting our newsletter, that means in that newsletter, we are going to give you a free one of these free gold Infernal Iron Chest. God, it just sounds so dramatic. I love it. Um, but yes, yeah, so this weekend you will have a chance to work with all of these fantastic champions. Carlock, Shadowhut, uh, Makos, Whittle, and Daieli. Uh, add them into your formations. Do that cool stuff because they're going to be woof. Uh, I don't. I always think of like, we're going to pump you up. <laughs> from Saturday Night Live whenever we talk about these buffs. Uh, but yeah, take advantage of this weekend. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter yet, definitely recommend you log into the game. There's this lovely little option on the left-hand side where you can get signed in for the newsletter. We send you once a week a newsletter about the weekend coming up along with a free chest. 
And then once in a blue moon, we send you something with more announcements or updates about something that's going on in the game, but there's always something free. Uh, so basically, whenever we use that newsletter, we give you something too. And I swear it is not like they're, let me tell you, I play some video games, all right? I play some other video games and I have actually like had to block <laughs> their newsletters because I know how that can be. Um, I promise you, we are not the every three hours. I'm not kidding. One of them was like every three hours uh, sending oh, you a newsletter geez. with yet another update. Uh, no, it's just once a week, every Friday. Um, normally around this time, the train starts rolling out. And the reason why I say train starts rolling out is because the newsletter just doesn't go out to everybody. Uh, it goes out in packets. So, um, you know, you'll start seeing these newsletters showing up in your inbox uh, you, within the first day of launch type of thing. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. If for some reason you don't see that newsletter, do check your spam because spam folders are doing some fun things these days. Check and make sure it's not going to spam. Check and make sure it's not going to your promotions folder if you have Google. I've noticed that has been happening lately. Um, and if you truly cannot find that email newsletter, uh, then just uh, reach out to uh, Idle Champions, submit a ticket and say, hey, my newsletter is not showing up. Can you help me out type of situation? Hopefully you won't need to take it to that level. Hopefully it's just, you know, Gmail or whatever email account you have is being feisty and put it into your spam folder. So there is that going on. Um, so... That's uh, everything we have going on officially in the game, unless there's something else you wanted to add to the conversation. There is one thing um, that I just remembered at the beginning of this. Also, uh, for those of you who are wondering about what's going on with the code, the code in the chat is correct. The code that's on the overlay is last week's code because whoopsie, so... I, I updated everything else. V, if you check your email, there will be a new overlay for you. I... Oh, the email. <laughs> okay, so. I went email because I figured that was probably going to be the easiest Actually, way of doing this. Actually, can you load it into the Zoom chat? Because I can download it from Zoom. Ah. Uh... That is an excellent question. Let me try. Yeah. Um, while we are doing that, the thing that I wanted to talk about was on Wednesday, we released um, we released two new uh, familiars. I'm realizing that I can't talk and also figure out how to oh, put a... Oh, I can do something. Uh, All right. So the Something two into familiars. chat at the same time. We released two new familiars that are classic familiars, which are based on the the basic basic beginnings of D&D, the Red Dragon and the Displacer Beast. And so what's cool about these familiars is not only are they celebrating the 50th anniversary of D&D by having these kind of retro figures, but when you get them... They have two different skins. There's the one in color and there's the one in black and white because the original D D art was all in black and white. And trust me, it's really, really cool to see uh the black and white on the screen. So uh so yeah, that is that is the thing I wanted to do. Uh, I'm getting the overlay right now. If for some reason things get stuttery, folks, it's because let's just say OBS and Google. Do not like to play nicely when both are open. Why are you saying that is excuse? They're saying that that's expired. That's weird. All right. Behind the scenes, y'all. Behind. Yeah, the I scenes. know. I know. Uh, Gabe is working on everything. Gabe is our awesome moderator and the uh, person in chat who helps us out with a lot of this stuff. Um, it was actually made expire today. Uh, yeah, Gabe, why don't you go ahead and take a moment and get us a, a just a brand new random one. Just we'll just yeah. start Electrum Chess That's all over again. Uh, just just make it simple, and then uh, we'll just have to tell people that the code that's on the screen is, no, no, no. is whoopsie. That's fine. I will. It's fine. That's what. Uh, that's why we have the exclamation mark code in the chat so that mm -hmm. everybody can just kind of copy and paste. Um, that's so what yeah, I can do. Do we have once we get that code in? What I can do is plug in um, the text box. Oh yeah, perfect. We will make it work. Yes, <laughs> we will make it work. Um, or at the very least, Gabe will make it work, and the two of us will will make it work. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> well, it helps if I can type typing from the side here. Uh oh. I love Hold it. On. I love it. Hold on. It's For all being... the people coming on in who are wondering what's going on with the code. No. <laughs> I'm typing like at a catty corner angle and my hands are like, what are you doing? <laughs> we should have, we should have painted. I could paint it on my, my paper plate. I could, new right? code coming. That would be, that'd be funny. Code. So yeah, 
Um, if you do have any questions that are not about the new code, that are about maybe uh, painting minis or um, working on idle champions or renders and things, or or maybe what we might be doing for our hundredth episode next week, because I, I believe at some point we're going to talk about some, some very specific fun things uh, or about cats, because you know what? It's paint and slay. It's Friday. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about cats. Oh God, that's uh, right. Have... I literally just didn't realize the cat had even jumped on my lap. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> cat. Uh, if you do have any of those questions, put those in chat with question in big capital letters so that uh, Gabe can grab it and very easily put it into a little backstage chat so that I don't miss it while mm -hmm. we are working on Dorender, which I, I think we still have some eye stuff to do and the gauntlet stuff to do and the base, if I'm yes. remembering correctly. That is correct. So, all right. What I'm going to do once we get that new code is I will put the new code where it says new code coming. It's not false advertising, yep. tech issues. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, we will get that new code to you soon. But yes, we're gonna pick back up with this lovely lizard folk render while we wait uh, for the code. Actually, we'll get the code to you, promise. Uh, so what we wanna do happen. now it'll is, happen. yeah, it'll happen. We're gonna to wanna to start painting these lovely, um, yeah, gauntlets, I guess is the best way to describe these wraps around the wrist. And yeah. for that, we're going to want to, Grab. What are we doing? Flesh tone, dark flesh tone. And we're going to paint that around the wrists. The irony of putting dark flesh tone on the pla places that are not a flesh. Right. That are not, that are not scale nor flesh. Did I... And while I'm grabbing, while grabbing that, um, mm -hmm. doo -doo -doo. uh, Loopy79, I'm going to get to your question in just a second. Uh, I do want to start with a, uh, I'll start with a painting question, but I'll come back to yours because it's very nice of you to ask, but that's that's a, a rambling story. Oh. Um, Ryback Stun wants to know, what's your favorite D&D miniature you've painted? Um, hmm. I So I, I have fewer miniatures than V, so I'll answer first. If we don't include any of my uh, PCs, because I feel like adding in any of the uh, characters that I have created and played is is probably um, it's probably those are obvious. Like I've got a couple of orc heroes back there that I'm yeah. really really happy with. But other than that, like for a while, it actually used to be the Mykonids that we did uh, mm -hmm. when we first the, like literally the first episode. But now that we've done that uh, that flail snail, you, you could probably see. Oh my, yeah. pointing at where where the flail snail. It's, yeah. It's there, there. So I don't know if you could see it, but it is sitting on top in a position of pride because I'm really happy with how that flail yeah. snail turned out. It's very, very cool. So right now, if we're excluding uh, characters that we have played, which I think is only fair, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with that. Um, I don't know why people are asking uh, what. When, why, who, and how is Orkira? Um, Not sure. And then Caleb Marin wants to know D and D Lego. Yes, no opinions, please. I'm much curious and chat too. I mean, I think they look yes. real cool. I think it looks real cool. Oh, Gabe got a new code. Uh, here, I'll give it to V. So hang uh -uh. tight, everybody. The new code will be coming <laughs> up shortly. Yeah, as soon as we get that, I will pop it into where it says new code, and I'll put it in the right. There we part. go. Not only did Gabe get us a new code, Gabe got us a, a new code that was not just a random collection, uh, but an, a, an actual bunch win. of words, because Gabe is awesome. Uh, so yeah, that'll get up. Oh, and it has been updated in the chat. So if you put exclamation mark code in the chat, uh, you will now get lizard paints. <laughs> I read it as lizard pants. <laughs> lizard pants. I mean... He's not, uh, he's not wearing pants. He's not, he's not wearing pants. But I don't know. I mean, we could always paint on pants. Yes, we could. <laughs> we could. Anyway, if we wanted there to. we go. Um, v, yes. what's been your favorite mini to paint of, no! of the billion? <laughs> don't ask me. I am anyway. very happy. Very, very happy with how the flail snail came out. In fact, my flail snail is one of those rare creatures that is living um, in my, like, actual home area, not just in my office area as a display piece. So that's Aww. how you know that mini is definitely a special one. 
because yeah. it's, it's definitely not unheard of for me to have a uh, miniature display here in my office because, you know, hello, all the bookshelves and whatnot around me. Um, but when it gets out into the house, that's that's how you know I'm really happy with that particular miniature. Um, the other one is, I actually, let me grab it. Hold on. I'll grab it because it's right here. Sure. The other one is the Onkeg that I did, um, but I did it as a jewel beetle type of approach. Ooh. Um, so it's this guy. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. That's so cool. So this is another one of my, like, super favorite minis that I've done recently. Yeah. Yeah, that one is super pretty. Yeah. This, 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 this one that I really like. <laughs> we're definitely we're definitely fans of the metallics and the jewels and the, the, the colors. sparkly when I it comes. I just like colors. Like, give me yeah. bright, vivid colors. To me, it just makes such a difference. Absolutely. Um, with impact. Oh, no. And definitely with the flail snow being one of my favorite creatures in D and D, and mm -hmm. the fact that then we got to paint a mini of it, mini of it, and right. the fact that I'm pretty happy with the, how that mini turned out. Like, well, yeah, it was a pretty easy answer for me too. Of like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's a good flail one. snow. Gotta go with the I'm snail. Go to a smaller detail brush because apparently I need to. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm kind of using a slightly larger one just to get the body of the gauntlets and then i figured i go to a yeah. smaller one once once we get close to the scales i'm gonna do the coloring book trick and kind of outline this and then go into the bigger question because i'm hiccuping a couple times and it's like lesson learned i need to edge first and then paint the full swath of the area to be honest i i was planning on doing the same and then realized as soon as i put brush to the mini that the small brush i had picked up is still not small enough oh so. dear uh, not a big deal. I, I have a smaller. I went with a, um, I had picked up a, my, a three over zero. And I'm going to go to a yeah. four over oh, zero. Dang. Oh. I'm going to go to the tiny, 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 tiny one. Phenomenal cosmic powers, itty bitty living space. <laughs> itty bitty bitty. But yes, yeah. uh, the, that Lego set looks super, it super really cool. Does. Um, I know, I, I know it is not cheap, but most Lego sets are are not right i mean because they come with a lot of parts um i really like um luke pointed this out and i totally agree mm -hmm. i like that the figures that come with that set are unique figures for that set that they didn't try to make like um they didn't try to make like uh dritzed or right. mert or you know any right. of those because yeah. i feel like that makes it much more universal for people who want to use that set and those figures, not just as a cool piece to have in your house, mm -hmm. but also like use it as a, an actual map oh, or yeah. use those figures. Like, I just think that was, that was a nice touch that I think a lot of people won't, necessarily think of until all of a sudden they're like oh yeah this makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. no it's true it's definitely true no i definitely i i have my eye on it um whether i get it right away is a different story but it's you know to me that's like a fun you know little family project to do together one weekend oh yeah you know something like that and then it's you know find a good place to display it and it becomes a you know asset to the house yeah exactly when does it come out did they announce that as April well first because i remember this that saying it's you know this is no joke this is coming out april 1st yeah i, I feel bad for anything that has to happen on april 1st but oh, it happens it does it does it really it's, i mean it's a thing I mean, not only the thing uh idol champions folks will remember that orkira got announced on april 1st Oh God! Funny. And we had to, and the only reason I think people believed us that uh, she was really the next champion coming to the game was because at that point, almost all of the other heroes were in the game. Yeah. So it was not a surprise that she was coming. It was a surprise about the when, and it was just like the timing worked out that she was coming out mm -hmm. for Greengrass and Greengrass just happened to start at a time and where the announcement was happening on April 1st. And there were there were quite a few discussions on, okay, do we announce this early? Do we announce it? Like, what do we do so that this isn't 
uh, that people think that we're we're playing some kind of prank. Right. So yeah, because I am not a fan of April first. <laughs> right. I am not a fan of of I should I'm not a fan of April Fool's Day. I'll put it that that's, way. That's that's me. I'm not a fan of that whole. I don't like April Fool's Day. It's not a thing for me. It's just. Yeah. I'm also that person who can't watch some comedies when it's like at the the laughs are at someone's expense. Mm-hmm. Um. It's just not my jam. Yeah. So, yeah. That being said, and I, I never endorse this, but then I am always very impressed uh, by anyone, but specifically companies, because I know every company, there's always that pressure of, well, it's April 1st, so we should right. do something. Yeah. Companies that yeah. can manage to do something fun and funny that is not making fun of anyone mm -hmm. and is not playing a trick on their right. uh, audience, I have a lot of respect for, because that is it's not a, humor. very it's easy. It's not malicious humor. Exactly. Um, the, the hats that we did last year was a lot of fun. I thought Those that that cute. was cute. Yeah, that was fun. Those were cute. Um, I enjoyed some of the, although it got to the point in where these just became real things that were put out. Um, there were there were some products that would get announced by mm -hmm. was it Think Geek? There was a company that basically got notorious for announcing. They did the uh, Tauntaun sleeping bag. I remember that was that was <laughs> one of the ones, and where everybody was just like, "Okay, this that. is funny, but also I want one." And so they had to make it a real product. Oh, funny! Yeah, yeah. I do Can't see. I thought that was funny, but that is. Sadly, the exception. Mm. Oops, sorry, I'm whacking my microphone. No, it's uh, okay. as the exception. But yeah, it sounds like at least there's a happy thing coming out on April 1st with the Lego. Yeah, I didn't know it was that soon. Well, it looks like if you're VIP, you get it April 1st. If you're general public, it's April 4th. So basically, first week of April. Okay, Not that makes too sense. shabby. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll put it on a wish list for my birthday. That's just it. Like to me that that's gonna be wish list fodder for me. Yeah. Something that a couple people can get together and yeah. pool some money. Yeah, exactly. To get. Um, Real world. Yeah. Well, chat is confirming it was Think Geek. Okay. Cool. Uh, and Caleb Marin is also confirming about dates and things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I forgot that Lego does that VIP thing. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. It is um, cool. They have that option. Loopy. Um, so let's go. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. What were you no, about no, to go say? Ahead. I was. I'm gonna quickly just rinse my brush because I need to. But I'm gonna see if I can find a quick little something to put at the bottom of the screen to block out the render three thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're not confusing so people. people. Don't get... Yeah. So yep. if you wanna chat with chat, <laughs> that's good. Well. It's it's uh, perfect that you say that because I will now go back to Loopy seventy nine who want to know random off topic Lauren and and they were very nice and said feel free to ignore if you'd rather but you know it's a fun question mm -hmm. I'm curious how old you were when you started first playing uh, any of the various instruments you play was your first introduction to oboe in high school band earlier curious about your musical journey the musical mm. journey sounds so impressive. Um, I started playing, I think I've told the story before, but it's been a while, so I'll, I'll give the TLDR version. I started playing oboe in third grade, which is very, 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 I didn't realize this until afterwards, rare. Most people don't start until like high school. Uh, and right. the reason I started on oboe was because I wanted to play the trombone and then I couldn't. And then I wanted to play the French horn and then I couldn't. And so right. the oboe was my third choice. And I was told, uh, oh yeah, if you play the oboe, uh, it's it's kind of like a clarinet, but weirder and you'll be the only one. And that was, it, it wasn't an intentional lie, but someone else actually ended up playing the oboe. And so I wasn't the only one. Uh, and yeah, huh. that was, I, I picked it because it was literally my third choice, which is funny nowadays. Uh, and then, yeah, when it got to high school, I was basically trying to decide, okay, do I want to become an astronomer? Or do I want to become a musician? And realized as much as I love astronomy and I'm, at least at the time, I was good at math. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm still good at math. Well, you know, it's been a, it's been a while. Uh, but I was pretty, pretty darn good at math. 
Um, I didn't actually like all the math that was necessary uh -huh. to be an astronomer. Um, and so I went musician, which has much simpler math. Well, and yeah. there's there's been no going back since. I was very, very lucky to have something I knew I wanted to do from pretty early on, because I know there are, it's, it's, I think it's actually pretty normal. I think I'm the exception. Oh, are we not what? online anymore? What? I'm seeing the uh, Fridays at 12 p.m. Pacific on Twitch. I'm seeing our- Oh, uh, why did it do that? No, scene. hold on, hold on. No, they can hear us. I'm working on, I don't know why it did that. It should not have. Check, can you still hear me? There we go. Ah, hi. See, I was trying to play around to fix it and it went completely gone. You know what? It happens because it's OBS. It does. Sorry about it that. Does. Was they should have still gotten your audio though? D did did my rambling story still come through while the screen was doing fun things? Audio was never interrupted. The video, no, it was that the overlay went over. Even though I had it in preview screen, it went to the main screen because OBS is fun like that. Because OBS. <laughs> exactly. Here we are, just trying to do nice things for our chat. Yeah. And OBS is like, nope. No, you're not allowed to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that, at least good. that should now cover up the broken code. So we're not getting perfect fuzzledness. Okay, Yay. folks. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah, trying, um, trying to do the thing. And so, yeah, I will close out my story by saying uh, I think I am the exception to a, a rule that most people at that age probably don't know what they want to do. And that is totally mm -hmm. fine and normal. And I right. think. I think any anyone who is trying to pressure uh, someone at that age to be like, okay, pick what you're going to do for the rest of your life, especially if they're thinking about spending a lot of money on college. Mm -hmm. Like, no, that's it's totally normal for you to be still trying to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. And even if you do know what you want to do, you can still change your mind. You can uh, still yeah. do something else. Uh, that is all perfectly normal. So... Thus, thus ends my, my TED talk. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and and now I'm going to try to get this last little bit under the arm of this gauntlet. The underarm? I'm going to play yeah. catch up because I've been doing tech work. <laughs> and we appreciate your tech work. Yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure we weren't confusing folks with the dueling codes. Absolutely. 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 Okay. Oh, I'm going to stretch and I'm going to look at questions that came on in. Um, Azeroth wants to know off-topic question. Apparently mm. today is the day for off-topic questions. I'm here for off-topic okay questions. This is cool by me. Yeah. I mean, we're we're just having fun painting minis and chatting. It can be about yeah. anything. Um, does a centaur have one or two rib cages? Oh, this has been We've going around again. Conversation. Well, we've had... <laughs> Have we had the rib cage, or we just we have? The have. Pants? No, because we, we talked about the pants. We also talked about the rib cage at the same time. Uh, you're probably right. I'm just forgetting. Um, I also don't remember what we said. Well, what do you I, think? I hold to the fact they have two sets of rib cages. I really do, because quite frankly, a creature of that size, I don't see why they wouldn't have two hearts to help make sure that the circulation is pumping around and around and around. I mean, that makes sense to me. Yep. Especially since one rib cage has to be the, the horse body and one right. rib cage has to be the upright body. If you yeah. say one, if you say they only have one rib cage, which one do you get rid of? Because that's, a that's that. <laughs> well, and I think that's, as you said, your reasoning for rib cage, that was mm. kind of what I had going on in the back of my head. Like, okay, if, if you're only gonna a... have one rib cage, yeah. what part of a centaur is okay to not have a rib cage, and it's terrifying to think of either. But it's still a support feature to the frame of the creature. You still need something as scaffolding to hold the musculature and the weight and everything like that. So yeah, it's I going to need something, regardless. I agree. All right, I think I got. <laughs> I'm almost there. I'm going to get more paint. Yeah, I'm letting it sit for a second because I'm having a hard time seeing actually under where you're showing right now, under that part of the arm. Yeah, it's a tricky spot. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and then Loopy79 wants to know, are lizard pants 
pants worn by a lizard or pants made out of lizard skin. Oh, that's terrifying. I think in the context of what we are doing right now, they are pants worn by a lizard. <laughs> also, give me just a second. I need to open up the window. I'll be right back in sure. like 20 seconds. Yes, absolutely. I, ooh. And if it were the second thing, talk about Hello Clarice. Yeesh. No. No, thank you. Yes, it's I'm 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 of the uh, pants that a lizard wear. Lizard wears school. If I could always have fun here, you have a lizard who is a wizard who wears pants instead of robes. How do you like that one? So we go for that combo. Thank you. You're We're welcome. in that weird time of the year and where it's the, mm, the temperature changes every yes. five minutes, and so trying to keep a constant temperature is hard. You mean Seattle weather? <laughs> Well, definitely Seattle, but I feel like that could probably um, be true for a lot of places yeah. this time of year. You know, the, the transition-ish from winter to spring is always a little wonky. Mm -hmm. This is true. This is very true. Um, okay, so we have the wrists all painted up, and then we're also going to want to... Since we have the, and we need those to dry, since we have the dark flesh tone out, add some black to this, and we're going to paint the, the base with the mix uh, of yeah. black and dark flesh tone. That's black pudding. The other black. Yeah. I mean, you could do there black we pudding. Go. That'd be an interesting color. I mean, I'm always tempted to use black pudding, but I think for, for the base, I'll just stick with black. Yeah. That's fair. That's totally fair. We're just going to go for, like, a dark brown here is basically what we're shooting for. Okay. I'm glad we're also continuing to use this because I, I definitely put way too much of oh, this paint oops. down on the paper plate. It happens. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go into my detail brush and edge around the feet, and then I'll move to a larger brush to get the rest of the base done. So I'm just going to go through and edge out around the claws and the tootsies. I think I will do the same. I think I've learned my lesson from the from the gauntlets. Yeah. I want that a bit darker. Nah, that should be totally fine. Totally up to you how dark you want to go with it. Uh, Loopy79 has a follow-up. Are lizard pants American pants, British trousers, or British pants, American underwear? I think we're going to go pants and trousers. I think so. And with a lot of questions like this, and it might be unfair. Wizards of the Coast is here in America. Yeah. So when they talk about things, when you get the official anything in a D and D book, they're using American nomenclature. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm gonna say we're talking uh, trousers and not underwear, simply because if if this was a official thing put out in an official book. They'd be using the American verbiage. Mm. Or potentially the Canadian sometimes. Mm -hmm. But mostly American. American. But you Sorry. know, I think I think in your D D game. That's what I would uh, call it today. It's yeah. And if you are in uh if you're in Britain and you're using trousers, like what whatever your table uses is the, the correct verbiage. Mm-hmm. It's like with pronouncing creature or NPC names. Whatever the DM says is correct. There you go. I mean, it's nice to go on D&D Beyond and hear what Matt Mercer has to say, but in the end, if my DM says Sigil, I'm saying Sigil. Doo -doo -doo. Well, thanks, Dynamite. Dynamite loves your game. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I fell. What? Sorry. You're Hold speaking on. with your mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to type and talk at the same time, and that was a failure. Oh, okay. well. It happens. It does. It happens. Apparently today, our, our stream is just, we're just, 
know, it's quirky. not really even problems. It's, it's just, quirky. it is, it's a Friday that we're all ready to have a day off on. <laughs> oh, God. Although we're usually talking about food and not pants, but here we this are. This is true. Okay, now see, I'm with Loopy79. I'm Canadian. It's the most confusing of all English dialects because it's completely random for word for word, whether we do things like Americans or Brits. See, I majored That's in fair. British literature, <laughs> Victorian focus. So my brain, I think, falls in the Canadian pattern because there are times I spell words and I'm like, why'd you put a U in there? I'm like, because I'm used to reading it, but that word spelled like that from the literature I've been studying. Yep. Um, so yeah, there are times I slip into the Brit approach to things or, or I'll be good and remember like, no way, it's spelled like this in America. Well, and it's extra confusing for us as we are Americans working on a game Canadian that is based group. on a game made in America, but we're working for a Canadian uh -huh. company. So, yeah, the, all bets so are the, off. <laughs> the U's appear in places and I just go with it. I'm just like, okay, it's cool. I've seen it both ways. I'm fine. I'm yep. ambivalent. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, at this point, at least the uh the vast majority of the blogs are being written by american yeah. uh so we should be fairly internally consistent there for the most part no, i'm kidding yeah. <laughs> all right i'm moving to a slightly larger brush to get into the rest of the base here nice i still gotta yeah. edge this other foot yeah but this is giving the um Wrist some time to dry before we go back to those. And same thing for the base. It gets the color on the base, and then that way we can go back to the base in a little bit and not have it still be wet. Yeah. I will say, um, if you haven't thinned your paints for the base, you might find it helpful because this is a very craggy textured base. Why? Yeah, I, I thinned it, and then uh, even then, I'm finding myself basically mm -hmm. like painting in the middle a little bit just to get some of the paint off of the brush before I go yeah. back over to the the makes tootsies. Sense. Yep, makes sense. Redistribution. Mm-hmm. For a paintbrush load. It is a thing. I'm definitely learning that this is one of the uh, this is one of the brushes that unfortunately I think I'm going to have to retire oh, after this. It it's served got, you well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the the sad thing is, like, it's still, it hasn't frayed, but I've already several times had to adjust, clip off the tip as gotcha. it's wanted to be yeah. a little bit of a hook, it wants and to, it's yeah. doing it again. Yep, that's definitely a thing that can happen. So, so yep. Totally understand. Oh, the little brushes are definitely the ones that get <laughs> Uh, they get mm -hmm. used and need to be replaced the most, in my opinion. Yeah, or at least I mine. Like, I like Sargent. Mm. Sargentum. Um, throw Aussie in there, and it's really fun. Agreed. Yep. Australian, yeah. Australian uh, quips and dialect. Ooh, that's an adventure, and a good one at that. And context is definitely mm -hmm. plays into that because in some contexts you you can definitely you know like in D and D it's a game, it's, right? It's just it's just a game, so it's kind of fun or funny when we have those okay, is it lizard pants or lizard trousers moments? But definitely in other contexts, it can be uh, much more serious. So it's yeah, it's it can be a, a sticky wicket. There, mm. I will use the British term. I, so like I think I can go to a bigger. Um, I my turn. Yeah, to go I was to a watching. Is it Time Team, the archaeology show from Britain? I think it's Time Team. Um, oh. I've been watching them on YouTube because, like, I used to. Well, I still am obsessed with archaeology stuff. Um, so I've been watching on YouTube just as kind of a way to wind down in the evenings. And there's this one fellow. He has a very thick accent. And one of my kiddos was sitting next to me and turned to me in earnest. Mom, do you actually understand what they're saying? I was like, actually, yes, I, I can. Um, because this is a show I've watched for decades. 
and you know living in England for a little bit you get used to hearing the different accents um so he's like I truly can't understand this person so I put captions on and like it was like a whole new world opened up (laughs) yeah and then it's like you'll you'll pick up on the you know the cadence and what it means here and there type of situation so but yeah that was one of those things where it's like I didn't even realize it was because I'm just so used to hearing it yeah well that definitely happens with me when it comes to any accent in media Mm. sometimes it just takes a minute for me to um to 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 basically get used to the inflection and the tone and the accent and then I can understand uh what's going on even if it's a thick accent you know Mm -hmm. someone comes along and is is doing something super thick welsh and it just it takes a moment or two for my brain to just switch over and then i'm like oh okay now i get it but having captions yeah it is absolutely Mm -hmm. i've like pretty much everything i watch now has captions floating around on the bottom because for me it's like there are sometimes like i just don't want the volume of a super loud Mm-hmm. Um, so then I just kind of like sit and sort of hear it. And if I don't catch what the word was because it's softer, softer volume, I can read it. That totally makes sense. I will admit, I actually prefer not to have captions on when hmm. I don't need them. Um, and that's mostly because if I don't need them, I just find myself reading them anyway. Mm-hmm. And I'll miss what's going on. Or I can miss what's going on. And that's right. that's my own fault. That's not the fault of the captions. Uh, but having them there and being able to enable them is so useful. It really is. Okay, so next up, we're going to want Leather Brown. All right. I'm finishing up the last little bit of the, the base yeah. here. Which I know I had out earlier. And now it's walked away on me. How dare. Oh, very Did one of the cats dare. decide that they want it? No, what probably happened is I put it back inadvertently. Did I do that? Mm. No, I did not do that. I need to do. Okay, this give me a second to look for spots. 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 Look for spots. I have so many leather browns, so I'm still good. Are you practically swimming, Leather Brown? Lies detected. You want the paint kits? I got the paint kits. <laughs> let's see here. All right, let's see if I can find my Leather Brown. Oh, ah, I forgot about I Tiny Tin. Yeah, so wait, I'm, what? There's a there's a paint color called Tiny Tin. Okay, what color is that? It's brown. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's find it again. That's kind of adorable. See? Tiny, tiny tin. Tiny tin. <laughs> oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> Actually, it's tinny tin, but it's been wiped away. Oh. I just realized that looking, I'm like, oh wait, no, this is because it's like been wiped off. Yeah. Okay. This I don't know. I, I I agree. I'm sticking with tiny tin. I like it. So we'll take leather brown. Oh, that's probably what the falling sound was. What I happened? heard something fall. It was probably the bottle rolling oh, off the desk. Yeah. That's probably what it was. Mm. It's fine. I'm good to go. Um, yeah, as so long leather as you've got the cap on there, it's fine. Yeah, it's like it is. It's fully capped. So I will. See, that, see down that is why always recap your paints as soon as yes. you have put some out onto your plate. Always recap because you never know when the cat is going to decide to go. Story of my life. So we're going to dry brush these gauntlets, uh, bracers, wrist straps, whatever you want to call them, with okay. leather brown because these have had a chance awesome. to dry now. And the name of the game is going to be pulling across the texture of these, not with the way the wraps lay. So you don't want to pull your brush this way. You want to pull your brush down or up the wrist. Okay? Okay. Yeah, that's a different way to wick your paint. Throw it on the floor. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. It's it's great for agitation. Perfect for agitation purposes. Exactly. Not great for your carpet. No. But, but also, also 
probably in that moment very uh satisfying very true, true. you know just like ah! and in Jeez. that moment fun and then it's afterwards that it kind of sucks but you yeah. know exactly and of course i've just painted the base and so what did i do as soon as you i start the on base? the gauntlets is i grab the base Ooh. and i'm even Ooh. on a on a uh stand but oh well it's all right I always gotta spend several minutes washing my hands off of hands to wash off all the paint when I'm done with this show, and it's fine. Oh, I definitely need to make sure I rinse my hands off before I go to the pizza place to pick up pizza because you know this isn't exactly appealing to see. <laughs> yes, I'm going figure... to a food place with my hands covered in brown. <laughs> you would good. figure people would just assume that you're doing like house painting, you know, doing doing oh, remodeling work. Yeah. Okay. And it's one down. Let's see about the other this, one. This is, you're going to find when you're painting this, you're going to want to go back and forth a little bit here. Okay. Uh, just because of the various angles you need to hit. And you have to keep it a controlled motion. It can't be a sweeping motion. Yeah, because otherwise so, you end up with yeah. brown on top of the green scales. And we already yeah. did so much nice work on these scales. That's just it. So it's very careful plotting and moving things around. And I'm also finding one is a lot easier than the other yep. because one of them is closer to the body and it's harder to get at those angles. Exactly. So just take your time with it. It's not something worth rushing. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, pizza might be good for dinner. I've got uh, Luke and I have a our home D and D game tonight. Oh, there you go. And so maybe maybe we give into some pizza. I don't know. I haven't. You know, it's one of those things where um, I haven't ordered pizza from the pizza place in a hot minute. Mm. So I thought it'd be a fun treat for this evening. So I will just. Sounds horrible, but I have to. I honestly, I just peel the cheese off. <laughs> I mean, if that's and what you gotta peel do. Peel the cheese and just have it without the cheese. Yeah. It works. Well, oftentimes when Luke is interested in pizza and I'm trying to avoid cheese, the, the pizza place that we go to does have other options. And so we'll there get like go. a small pie and then I'll get some of the... Mm -hmm. they're, they're still real unhealthy but some of the the chicken dishes that they've got that Ooh, are real good yeah still really unhealthy but you know tasty and then i have to worry about cheese or at the very least i don't have to worry about as much cheese yeah uh okay yeah, sorry chat yeah i'm not gonna share where i get my pizza from because that's a location device detector so i'm not gonna give the name out <laughs> yeah everybody's got their own home yeah. pizza place anyway, exactly so. But look look for your friendly local pizza place. That's just it. That's just yeah. it. Okay, so that is that. Rawr. And then, rawr. So now, how's your base doing? Is that dry yet, or you need some more time with that? Uh, I, Yeah, I need some more time. The middle cool. is still very wet, for sure. Uh, so then let's work on the eyes. Okay. All right, so we're going to need to get white out. We're going to dot the eyes white, and then we're going to dot them again with... This is actually quite appropriate, because you just open it up with yellow. <laughs> ah! Yay! Yay! Awesome. Which, which white? Uh, dead white. Okay. Dead white, okay. Which is basically as close to white white as you're going to get in the prismatic paint line. Okay. And you'll definitely want a little bitty detail brush for this one. Am I going to go with a brush or am I toothpicking this? Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to go to these ones. I'm going to crack open my detail brushes. It's a big enough eye that I think I'm going to stick with the detail brush. Yeah. So I'm, I'm reaching go super for slow. my Vallejo. This one. And it's bitty. I can get the cap off. Tiny, tiny. 
What is it with stuck caps? Oh, did yours get stuck? <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, I got it, got it, got it. I just had to wiggle. Okay. It. There we go. So you can see it, oh, yes. it's teensy, eensy. Tiny, tiny. Okay. Teeny, tiny. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about my is... my joyful cap adventures from the weekend in a second. But yes. first, uh, chat, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I'll give you a topic. You can you're you're looking for something to have for dinner, but you can't have pizza. What's your next go to? There you go. OK, so that's the one I done with the white base, because basically if we were to put yellow over this right now, Chances are you're going to be fighting with green or blue, and it's just going to muddy it down to like this weird brown color. Um, mm. So we want to blot that out and do a white so we get a truer yellow tone. That's why we're doing a layering here between the white, then moving to the yellow. It's another eye. Little girl, if you jump on my lap right now, I'm going to be mad at you. Here's the other one. Ta -da. So now that that's whited out, give that a little minute to dry. Mm. And I'm going to go to the yellow okay. and do the same thing. Put the yellow on top of the eye. But because we have that white base, it's going to show a little bit better. Okay. Which is what we want. And I will, I will joyfully show off my sun yellow. Watch, everybody. Look show what I did over the weekend. Yellow. Oh, yay. Da, da, da. Sun yellow. This is literally the first time I will get to use it because I finally got my sun yellow to cooperate. I mean, that's worth celebrating. <laughs> I can and feel it now. not only the sun yellow is not <laughs> the gone, the sun yellow gone. is here. Yep. Yep. Not Very only cool. is it worth celebrating because now, now I can use the paint, but also I managed to do it without getting sun yellow. Everywhere. On anything that, well, yeah, everywhere. I think it's probably the easier way of saying it for sure. <laughs> but but not in the places I didn't want to get it. So let's put it go. that way. Yeah. Okay, so now going back in with the yellow. All right. Redot the eyes. Okay. Eyes part two. And because it has that white underneath, it's nice and vivid. Okay. Yeah, hold on, I don't like how that is steepled. Here we go. Yep, and of course we get quiet because detail brush. Because eyes. Yep. Haha, -ha, there goes the other one. Beep. I like it. Now, how brave are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do the uh, reptilian slit? Or do you want to just leave it as the eyes yellow? You can do either or, both is fine. Uh, you know what? Let's let's do it, if only because. Let's show it off. Let's Let's... Give this a try. Mm -hmm. uh, I will answer this question that came in real quick. Uh, Mama Soar. Uh, Mumu. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, first off, welcome in. Uh, they've asked, I started playing your game and now I'm trying to play the new event Fool's Errand, but I'm stuck trying to get Dark Urge. I keep trying or do I need to play more? Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you've just begun, then basically what you have to do is build up favor in a bunch of different mm -hmm. ways, which basically is play until you hit your wall, which is the, the point in where you can't progress mm -hmm. anymore, and then uh, end that adventure and start again. And don't be worried about the fact that when you sit, if, if it says, hey, get to area 50, and you've gotten to area like 42, you're going to say, complete the adventure, and the game is going to go, but you didn't get to 50. And it's fine, because what yeah. you're going to get is you're going to get favor for that campaign. You're going to have gotten uh, gems and chests that you can use to gear up your champions and go again. And the next time you'll be able to get to 43. So that is uh, my best suggestion for starting out is don't, uh, if you get stuck at a, at a, you know, a wall that we call it, you know, I can only get to 43 and then I kind of sit there and I can't go any further. Complete it, 
start it again, you'll go a little bit further. Yeah. Um, also, I'm sure there are a lot of people in chat who will uh, be more than happy to give advice, especially for uh, those who are brand new. Exactly. Uh, okay, okay, so, so we're, we're doing the slit. We're doing the slit. We're doing the reptilian the slit eye. eye slit. For the All right, go watch this. All right, so I'm going to go in with... See, I'm going to do a practice slash. Sometimes it helps to do a couple of practice sweeps just to check. Mm. before going in. All right. So I'm going to do a little dip into my black. And offload a little bit of that paint. Because sometimes it helps to keep the paint loaded on the brush. Other times, not so much. The fun thing is, is with this guy, it has a ridged brow. So you have to find the right angle to approach. Go in and just do a very light streak down. And there's the reptilian slit. All right. <laughs> Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> way too much black. I'm sorry. That, that's just, I, that. I have to. Leroy Jenkins it. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is just part of my geek DNA at this point in my life. I mean, fair. Okay. Nope, I took off too much. It's okay. All right. Here we go. Slit number one. Oh, this looks so much smaller on my mini than it does on your camera. Right? <laughs> okay. Here's the other side. Reptilian slit. I definitely recommend practicing on your palm or your hand to get that pull down. Rawr. Rawr. There we go. Okay, so that takes care of the eyes. Still working on it. That's okay. I'm, I've gotten to the point where I I feel confident when I go to do the slip, but then I've practiced so much that I've taken too much off of the, oh, the paintbrush. And so I've got like a tiny little dot on the mm -hmm. top of the eye and then it just goes away. So yeah, like, that's go. definitely a thing that happens. Um, okay, so while you're working on that, I'm gonna shift over and work on the teeth. And for that, I'm using bone white, uh, which is basically just an off, very off beigey white. I'm gonna put that onto the teeth. The choppas, one might say. All right, eye number two. Let's do this. Oh, almost, almost. Almost. I'm sticking with this very small detail brush for the teeth. All right, as is the case, mm -hmm. the second one came out better than the first one. The second one I'm very oh. happy with. The first one I may go in a little bit later and go back to some Fine yellow and it. just make it make it uh, be more of a slit and less of a, a dot, but that's okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's okay. All right. It is okay. Oh, yep. I see, I see folks already in chat uh, mm -hmm. joining in. Joining to in. Help the... out new players. That's awesome. There are two things our chat love more than anything. One is free chess, and the other is helping new players. This is true. This is very All cool. All right. You said white on the teeth. Yep. Uh, bone white. Not bone white. Not the dead white. Bone white. Bone white. Come here. And there are itsy bitsy little teeth at the bottom. Ah, uh, Mumu, type into chat exclamation mark code. Um, and it will it will pop up. Usually the code is also on the screen somewhere, but that's the easiest way. If you join any of our shows that, that have a free chest and 
I believe all of them do, uh, then that is the best way to get it. You do exclamation mark code and it'll give you that that right there. And if you're on a PC, well, if you're on anything, you can copy and paste it right into your uh, the, the redemption part of the chest. Uh, it's a little harder if you're on console or mobile. And uh, basically anytime there's an in-game alert sending you someplace, there will be a free chest there. Uh, if it's one of our streams, it'll happen just like that. If it's a third party stream, like on uh, Wednesdays, we usually have an alert for Dungeon Scrawlers, which mm -hmm. uh, is a, a stream that has been going on for a while and is awesome. You go there, same thing. They'll have the code on the screen. And if you put exclamation mark code, it'll show up in chat. And if you get a link to one of our YouTube videos, um, same thing. It'll take you to our YouTube in that specific video. Look in the description, usually the first line of the description in our videos. We'll have that chest. Yeah. Okay. So that should take care of the teeth for you too. I'm yep. Gonna I'm going to this brush away. Now, now that I've gone on my, thank you for coming to my chest to Ted talk. <laughs> it just, it just so happens that that specific question is like a, yeah, a surprisingly course. major part of my job. <laughs> well, that's fair. Totally, so you've asked totally fair. the right people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know, I'm gonna get in here on TVs. Two furs, two for Tuesdays. And then what I'm gonna do is what I have left of, let me see, do I have enough? No, I do not have enough. So what I'm gonna do is gonna add some dark flesh tone to the bone white that I have to create a lighter color and dry brush that onto the base. Okay. So kind of equal parts at this point with what I have going on. I'll do a swatch so you can see. My lizard folk is definitely side-eyeing me now with one side. Yeet. I'm definitely getting a bombastic side-eye. It's a little... It's a little nefarious. I'll say that. Mm, it's, it's a little... No, 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 no. Especially this is obviously a a being that is about to pounce on something. So <laughs> I totally get the <laughs> um, back tooth, back tooth, back tooth. All right, and there we go with the swatch color for the brown. Okay. Yeah, Mumu, you'll find that chat is fantastic about jumping in and helping each other out always. So. Happy to have you here, happy to have the questions, happy to support you however we can. Yeah. Stick around and eventually there'll be someone else who will come in, it will be brand new, and then you'll be yeah. the person helping exactly. them out. Exactly. Okay. Would you please repeat what you did for the dry brushing the base? Bone white mixed with dark flesh tone. Okay. That's it. Okay. And I've it should a... offset the color so that when you go back in, it'll start to show off the texture to this lovely base. Nope, see, that's going to have enough. Off. I think I have enough. Maybe a little bit more. Nope, that's Banshee. That's Bone White. There we go. Yeah, don't don't mix up your banshee with your bone white because one's the blue undertone and one is the tan undertone. There we go. There we go. Ooh. That's more like what was shown. Okay. Oh, now I got way too much on this brush. Um. Let's see. You good? Yep, just trying to keep an eye on things, you know. Fair the enough. multitasking is happening. Multitask, multitask, multitask. Yep. You can never be doing just one thing when you're on stream. No. You always gotta be doing never. four or five all at the same time. You do 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 do. It's 
sleep Part trunk of the is, juggling act. Sleep trunk skated is too early for varnish. Yes, the varnish will happen. Uh, it usually doesn't happen on stream because when you do the wash, you want to make sure it was cure for a little bit before varnishing mm. up. Um, but yeah, varnish coats do happen, just not on screen. But I don't think hmm? uh, showing off the, you know, doing a varnish or a, a sealant coat or any of that, that's not necessarily something that uh, needs to be shown. That's a, yeah. that's a Plus it's, it's fairly hard to show because it's clear. <laughs> something happened? I, I don't know if it's being picked up on my camera, but, uh, or by my microphone, but there is a very loud mic uh, motorcycle outside right oh, now. No, it's going away. It's going it. away. Didn't hear that it, one at all. It started up in the middle of it, and it was just like, oh, excuse me. Deals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me. I am speaking here. All right. I'm on stream. <laughs> How dare you to start your car or right? motorcycle or whatever. All right. I'm going to quickly dip back into my black pudding because I noticed a couple of claws have um, little spots missing. Mm. Pardon me, but that's easy enough to quickly go in and address. There we go. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on camera, but there. Okay. Happy with that. Yay. All right. So we're getting there. You're absolutely getting there. Yay. I mean, we're, we're pretty much there. We're, mm. we're, we're mm -hmm. close to there. We are. We are. Uh, the signpost have... is in sight. Yes, it is. So now we're going to move on to washes. Um, so we're going to be using both a black wash. I was debating jumping into a green, um, but but do you have the um, what's it called? In the set of the line, not the deal tan, the camo, Anthonian camo shade. Do you have that? No. Okay, I that's what I thought. Actually, like, but I don't think you have that one. I don't um, think I have that one. I'm gonna double check because that. I have a green, I think. It might be Beal Tan Green, which is more of a bluish green. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and that's going to make it... Well, it's up to you. If you want to do the green wash, you could. It's just going to make this a more of like a brighter Kelly Green-esque with a Beal Tan on top. Okay. Um, reason why I wanted to use the camo is to kind of keep things in more of a warmer green line. Um, that makes in sense. In that respect. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a black wash where there's green. We're going to thin that black wash out and then we'll do a sepia on the frill and also okay. on the underbelly. So actually we're going to start with the sepia on the frill and the, um, throat underbelly down back the tail type of situation. Okay, that's good. Cause I apparently did not grab black wash. How dare. Uh, okay. Where I, I grabbed the two other blacks, the, the black and fair. the black pudding, but not the black. No, that, that's fair. Not to worry. All right. Okay, but we are first starting with the sepia on the underbelly. Mm-hmm. And the frill. So I will get it going here on the frill so you can see. What this will do, because it has that warmer undertone to it, as opposed to just the brown wash, it's going to keep that vibrancy going for the frill. We don't want to lose that because we put a lot of yeah. work into making that a fun, bright color. Absolutely. So we'll put that in there. Just want to show off the exactly. depths of the frill, but not necessarily darken it. Because, yeah, I like... yeah. I really like that splash of color. Me too. And if splash, you really wanted term. to make that pop out, that's where you could always go to the Cassandora yellow um, Citadel shade, but it'll almost make it glow. <laughs> so mm. forewarning there, if you decide you want it to be really bright, you can use that one. It'll just be very vibrant. Um, so that's what it looks like on this frill. Nice. Now we're gonna go in moving the light around and put this onto the underbelly zone. Right. So basically across the shoulders where it is that lighter tone. Under the throat. Tickle the throat. 
Tickle me El lizard man, not Elmo. Tickle me lizard folk. And then down the stomach and under the tail is where this sepia wash wants to be directed. All right. Yeah, normally I am all for the bright, brighter colors, but I feel like with this creature, uh, having the bright color but not glowing, I think probably yeah. makes the That's most just sense. It. It's not, not necessary for it to be a vibrant, you know, that fun area where it's going to flash back because it's wet. Because yeah, usually I would definitely go for that, but the more I think about it, the more this creature makes makes way more sense that they're mm -hmm. they've got uh, subtlety. <laughs> they could still hide, <laughs> right? <laughs> they could still succeed on a stealth check. They aren't a beacon. Exactly. They aren't a beacon of brightness. Oh, what we could do, we could do a brown wash instead of a black wash on the green. We could do that. That'll what will be the, the difference? Uh, the warmth. It'll keep the warmth of the green without yeah. making it yellow. So we'll do that. That makes sense to me. I yeah. like, since we're not going with bright, keeping that warmth, I think, is yeah. appealing. Which you can see. Uh, Neuron Thief asks, uh, new player, welcome. Glad to have uh -huh. you. If you are already logged into the game, do you get a notification that you got the chest or do you need to peek from time to time? Uh, if you're talking about the notification that appears on your bottom left saying, hey, click on here to go see uh, a show, uh, like you might have clicked on to come here, mm -hmm. you do need to go and um, basically you'll come to wherever it's directing you to, in this case, this show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> And there will be a code that will that you'll be able to get either on the screen or you'll type exclamation mark code into chat. And that will give you that code that you then go back to your game and redeem in. Um, if you click on chests, there'll be a redemption area. Yeah. And that's when you'll get the chest. Uh, so, yeah, whenever you get that alert, just go and check out the thing. And if you like the thing that we've sent you to, stick around and enjoy. Uh, and you'll get a you'll be able to pick up a chess code for it. And then usually with our shows, with the shows that are Codename Entertainment, Idol Champions related, we send a couple of alerts for the shows. So this is a two hour show. So you'll get four alerts, one every half hour, but it'll be the same code per show. Mm -hmm. um, the show after us, uh, Formation Save is two hours as well. So you'll get four alerts. A lot of the shows are only one hour, so you'll get two. Uh, and a lot of shows, especially some of our third parties, just get one big one-hour alert. So, uh, so yeah, when you see that pop up, yeah. come come on by. Exactly. And I think, Rawr. sweet. Rawr. Rawr. Okay, so now we're gonna dip into um, changing up. We're gonna do umber as opposed to black wash. Which okay. means I need to find my umber, which is basically brown. Okay. Is that... So that's not the leather brown that we're grabbing. Are we making it into a wash, or is it one of the washes that's it's in the It's one of the washes the that's in the umber. Oh. Yep. Okay. I it exists. I'll pull it out of the thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. And we'll still use the black wash on the base, so... There you are. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mumu, you should still be able to get the Dark Urge through next Wednesday. So I'm not quite sure what you mean by it's too late. Yep, you still have time. Yeah. And you know what? Even if you don't unlock one of the champions, there are uh, time gates. You, As you play, you get what are called time gate pieces. And at any point, you can open up a time gate and... Uh, be able to go in and unlock any of the champions that are available. And we do free time gate weekends. So like next weekend, there'll be a free one that you can just 
open up uh, and you'll get a couple to choose from. But if you spend the time gate pieces, you can choose from any of the available ones. So you can always go back and catch up with one of the champions that uh, that has come out. Yeah. Fuck. So now the name okay. of the game is adding the brown wash to the rest of this. Okay. Except for the base. The base will do the black wash. All right. This is just going to help enhance the really deep set details of these scales. And also washes are just fun. Yep. Me knows it's one of my favorite parts of doing the this painting. Is the yeah, this is this is a favorite phase for Lauren. Yeah. Totally fair. I have learned so much from UV, but what I, I still enjoy the whole uh, how easy it is to put on a wash and how much it does so much work. I mean, it's valid. Yeah. It's absolutely valid. I'll pull this note. You just want to make sure you're moving this wash around because it's going to want to puddle. Yeah. And the texture that is this mini. For the good reasons of there's oh, yeah. just a lot of depth to these scales. Yeah. But then, yeah, it's... It definitely wants to puddle, and I'm getting uh, more bubbles, bubbles in places yep. than, I, than I would like. You may find it helps just to keep blotting the brush off. Like, you can see I'm doing it here. I'll, like, wick away some excess and just blot it onto the paper towel as opposed to try and move it around. Yeah. Because the more you move it around, the more it will bubble up on you. Poke, poke, poke. hands. <laughs> yeah, I almost forgot about the hands. Yep. <laughs> I was just doing the arms and I'm just like, all right, time to move on to this. No, no, no wait, we, we got fingers. There are fingers. There is more. But wait, there's more. Yeah. I, I need way more wash than what I put down. There we go. That should hopefully be enough. But yeah. So, let's see if I can get the lighting so it's not flaring. This is with the wash on it. You can see that one arm. And that's without the wash. So yeah, it's enhanced. So much more detail. Yeah, it enhances it all. Enhance. guy has legs <laughs> legs for days doesn't skip leg day at all leg day chest day arm day, all day. i mean all, all days exactly at all times you can yep. find uh this the swole boy in the gym you know and again this this lines up with the fact that if i were using this as an encounter in one of my games would like totally have the surfer dude type of way of talking <laughs> Which way to the beach? That way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, totally. I will totally help you out and get there. Uh, I got a cart. Mm -hmm. We'll play some tunes. It'll be so amazing. My surfer isn't quite as good. But I tend to get into Valley Girl. <laughs> like, totally. Oh, funny, yeah. Okay, this one is definitely hungry for the wash. Wow. Yeah, Don't be surprised actually... if you're using a lot of wash on this mini, because with all the textures, it is eating this up. And I mean, obviously, that's a good thing because it'll, you know, pop more. But definitely go back and check for uh, puddling and wick yeah, away yeah. as you can. Yep, I just actually had to add more to my plate because mm -hmm. 
It had just eaten it all up. Yum, nom, nom. Wash, wash, wash. Do, do, do. And I almost missed under the arms. Oh. <gasps> yeah, I'm kind of doing like doing one side and then I'll flip over and do the other side. I don't know why I did that today, but that's what's speaking to me for the uh, wash approach. Yeah. Oh, Sergeant, uh, th I appreciate the compliment. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, you're so fast at this. Um, V's been doing this for a very, very long, long time. time. She is incredibly, yeah. uh, I mean, that's that's why she's the teacher here. She knows what she's doing. And uh, I have now done 99 episodes, so I've had a little bit of practice. Oh, um, should, we, um, should we chat about what we're going to do next week? Next oh, week? yeah. Shall we? Yeah. This would okay. be a good time because uh, it's, I'm still need a, several more minutes for the wash yeah. here. Yeah, so. so not much is going to change. It's the same thing. So next week's going to be our 100th episode. Yeah. So Lauren and I have been plotting. Yeah. And we're going to be doing some fun giveaways. <laughs> so yeah. reached out to our friends at WizKids and they have sent along a couple of things. So we're going to have two lucky winners next week. Uh, do keep in mind this is open to U.S. and Canada only, Quebec excluded, because this is a physical item we have to ship, and there are rules we have to abide by when doing something like this. Um, yeah. So they sent along the Jabberwock Mini from the D&D Knowles' Marvelous Miniature line, um, which we've done a few episodes on how to paint that one. They also sent the Hell Wasp Paint Kit, which, again, is another miniature we have done. So... Yeah. Uh, if you tune in with us next week, you will have a chance to enter and win uh, either the Jabberwock or the Hell Wasp as a fun little celebration for our 100th episode of Paint and Slay. And again, these are both minis that we've painted on this show. So you can get these minis. You can check out the uh, information on our discord to get the supplies and paints and everything for those minis and then go to our youtube channel uh Cine games youtube and you can find those episodes in the paint and slay list and you can paint along and paint either the jabberwock or you could paint the hell wasp um the hell wasp actually you have two options you can paint along with lauren and i or there is going to be a qr code on the box for the hell wasp that has uh, another tutorial on how you could also paint the Hell Wasp based upon the paint that comes in that kit. Uh, just as a little FYI on that one. So we just thought that'd be something fun to do for the yeah. viewers. And also as a reminder, next week, and this isn't related, it just happened to happen at the same it time. It just happened, yeah. Next week, just next week's episode will be two hours earlier. We'll be at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, same place, same show, still giving away stuff. Uh, just because next week, next weekend is Easter weekend. And so a lot of people are off and a lot of people are uh, doing other things. And so uh, we are the only thing that are going to be on that day. Yeah. We are the v, show next Friday. <laughs> yeah. And V is on the East Coast. So we thought before we even knew it was going to be the 100th episode, yeah. we thought, you know, it'd be nice to for, for once for V to not have to stay up late not to <laughs> work not late on a friday i'm done because of yeah so so we moved a little oh you know back to, to 10 a.m yeah. pacific so it'll be 10 to 12 and then we we counted the numbers and i was like oh and that's also our 100th episode yeah. so so yeah we'll be putting out, out reminders and stuff and oh, obviously yeah. there will be the in-game alert so that you don't miss it but uh yeah V got some awesome giveaways uh, thanks to the Wiz awesome Kids. people at WizKids. Yeah. yeah. So something's So fun. come on by. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, Quebec is always going to be excluded from these types of tangible giveaways. It's just, they have some interesting rules uh, when it comes to stuff like this. And it's actually I'll say to the this. detriment of the winner. <laughs> Oftentimes, oftentimes. Yeah. So, I mean, B. Dave does the joke of uh, Quebec, you know what you did. Yeah. Um, the the truth is it's Quebec trying to protect people. Yeah. Um, but the TLDR is what happens is if you win something and it's a thing, 
and it's not that expensive, the fees and the taxes you have to pay are often more Way than the more. thing is worth. Yeah. So we don't send to Quebec because, like, th these are not expensive minis. Like, uh, uh, the paint kits are amazing for, yeah. you know, you get everything in one. But just because of that amount, uh, it is incredibly possible that a winner could end up paying more than the cost of the paint kit, yeah. which is not good. <laughs> and, and so as much as it kind of stinks that we can't send to Quebec, we're doing that because you don't want us to, you don't want to win something from us from Quebec because you're going to end up paying yeah. money to win a thing. And that's unfair. So Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, yeah, there's, there's some rules and regulations you need to kind of pay attention to and be respectful of. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where when that's the situation, it's kind of a feel bad, like here you won something, but now you have to pay a lot out of pocket to claim yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. But, so that is why it's U.S. Yeah. and Canada only for the physical stuff. Yeah. But those will be our uh, fun giveaways for next week. And we'll have the chess code as well, like we usually do. Yep. Um, but like Lauren said, we're also getting an earlier start. Uh, so that'll be a thing to keep in mind, too. Make sure you tune in at the earlier time next week. Next week only. Yeah, it just happened to work out that way. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but mm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it feels. Yeah, I'm just yeah, looking forward to like not being sitting here and be like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> yeah, we we appreciate you show. having your the late show. Yeah, for your time. Yeah, for my for my zone. Yeah. But yes, there will be uh, not. We will be the only show on that day, and there won't be quite as many people because in Canada, that is a federal holiday. Oh, so yeah. a lot of the wonderful c &E people are off that weekend. And then also it's Easter weekend, so a lot yeah. of... Uh, Traveling is it, going on, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. I mean, we were talking earlier about how a, a non-insignificant part of my job is the chess codes and the in-game alerts. So there's uh, obviously a lot of third-party that we send alerts to in chess codes who are not going to be playing on say Easter Sunday. So it's a lot of that kind of back and forth and making sure that everybody is, is coordinated. Yeah. And then we're almost done with work. So yep. So it'll be me and V and I believe Mars is going to be, going to be hanging out with us. Yeah. yeah. That'll gonna, be fun. And, and, and that might be everybody. It, it, seriously. <laughs> that might be, that might oh be. Oh God! Is it gonna be just the three of us? Am I? Yeah. I, I, Trevor. Trevor will be around. Trevor. I think. Wait. I think Trevor is working. I mean, he won't be on the show, right. but yeah, because it, it's only the Americans that are working yeah. that day, and then some Americans are also off. Also took off. Yeah. Yeah, because you know it's well, it's, it's Easter weekend. it is a weekend that a lot of people want to have time off, or yeah. the, the Americans looked at what was going on and said, "I'll take the day too." Exactly. So now that I think about it, it might just me be me, you, Mars, and and Trevor somewhere having That's fun. That's pretty a fun stand up. What are you doing? The same thing. <laughs> I've I've had to run those stand ups before, where it's yeah. been like me and two people. And it's, oh, hi. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Be, be, 10 second stand up. Hi, it's good to see you. Yes, okay, exactly. bye everybody. Oh, hi Dan, welcome. Hello Dan. Welcome. Right. Hey, uh congratulations on Tome of Beasts getting put onto DD. Right? Beasts. Yes. Very cool. As I'm someone so who has had to do a lot of putting in private homebrew in order to get those beasts in there so that I can yes. throw them at the players. I was very excited. Very I'm excited. Super excited. Okay, so this is the Lizard. Uh, as Dan put in, with the sepia on the frill and on the underbelly and throat and the umber on the rest of the body. So we're going to let this dry because I don't think we can handle this quite yet for the base. Probably not. What else were we going to... Oh, to the base, put a wash on the base? Yeah, put a wash on the base. Uh, the black wash on the base because that'll make it pop out just a little bit more. Actually, I'm... Are you happy with mine? your base as is? I... Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry that <laughs> the cat is not happy with the base. She's not. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm kind of giving it a pat and it feels 
pretty dry. Like yeah. I, I think I'd be okay with doing a. Okay. So then let's. Especially uh... since it's the base, it's not okay. like we're. Yes. Uh, it's not like we're gonna obliterate an eye or something. Uh, and you said black wash. Yes. <laughs> obliterate an eye. <laughs> Sounds painful. <laughs> Gone eyes. But that's Boom. what I like. The I distinctly remember the one time in where I I went for the wash a little too soon and uh, it, I, yeah, I was it wasn't the eye no, like muddy. Yeah, something something. Uh, was it? I think it was actually the jabber walk now that i think oh, about it oh yeah 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 i think there was some i just i went for the wash a little too soon and then went oh mm. that's not what oh that's so. not what i was hoping for okay so yeah, yeah, yeah. going on the black wash adding that onto the base and that's going to further enhance it that much more I'm trying to find a good angle there we go and work over the tippity toes Have a good weekend, Caleth. Enjoy. Bye, Caleth. In, enjoy the, the errands. You know, ho hopefully you get them done quickly and without issue. There you go. Uneventful errands. Ideally. Yeah. I will also admit um, some of me wanting to do this wash is like, we're so close to having this guy be done. Yeah. That. I'm, I'm like ah, we're dry. Let's go for it. I Let's know we got we got it. the tiefling sitting here ready to right. go in these yeah. cases, but we've been we've been kind of lucky so far. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is looking yeah. this is looking good. I'm very happy with this. Be a little harder to see on mine, but yeah. Let me try. Getting to that fun time of year where the lighting changes on me, daylight wise. Yeah. So trying to find. Here we go. Here's the happy spot. So oh yeah. See how that really pops that out even more so. This is a mini that is just filled with nooks and crannies and crags mm -hmm. everywhere. Let's see, Sarge Antum is asking, other than varnishing, do you work on these off screen? Sometimes we'll give, like, there'll be homework, like if we need to finish like a certain part of the mini. Um, but the majority of these we finish on screen with a full paint. Yeah. Um, so we'll say if there's like weekend homework to do this. Uh, but this was all done fully on screen. Yep. Usually it's, it's like the, like you said, the varnish. And then often it is with some of the bigger minis, like the dragon, the green yeah. dragon. Um, I don't remember what else. A couple of where it's the like, Jabberwock, okay, we're now going to spend, we probably, um, yeah. we're going to spend the next couple of hours painting this thing green. And so, yeah. and you know, we'll show same. most of it on camera and then I'll be like, and then just continue and to paint. Just finish it off screen because, you know, <laughs> yep. otherwise. And occasionally, a... yeah. Like, you don't need four episodes of painting the wings green. <laughs> no, so, no. Yeah. That's why. And every once in a while, I get a little bit behind. And so I'm like, all right, I'm just going to finish this up on my own. But we mm. we try to... There's a laid back enough show yeah. that I we both would rather have, quote unquote, downtime, quiet yeah. time, than miss out on something. So, yeah, exactly. Arc. All right. So we're going to let this guy dry. Do not varnish this until this time tomorrow basically if you're playing the paint at home game um give your washes about 24 hours to dry just to make sure they've you know properly dried you don't have any little wet spots because what can happen is if you add your varnish ahead of time too soon and things aren't dry you'll actually peel your paint away um, which you don't want to do so because this has now been exposed to additional moisture through the wash you want to make sure everything is dried and cured and then you can go in what I would recommend using on this type of situation, because we're not looking at a slimy creature, you want to go in with a matte varnish. So you can use the Mod Podge Ultra Matte, or you can use the matte varnish that does come in the D&D Prismatic paint sets as well. I am a fan of the Mod Podge Ultra just because it's been my tried and true go-to for five years now. Yeah, wow. Um, but yeah, I like that one, especially because it's just, it's easy to work with. Um, but yeah, so we're going to place this fellow, dude bro, uh, we're going to put him over there. And now we're going to jump stay over. there. 
Next to my temperature gauge. Stay. Yes. Now we're going to jump over to doing, oh, and because it's white, lighting gets fun again. Uh, we're going to jump over to painting the Tiefling Warlock. Uh, again, this is from the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures from WizKids. We're going to focus on the femme presenting one just because, I'm sorry, there's just some really cool kick butt details on this mini that I wanted to have fun with. Um, and because there are so many really cool detailed bits on this miniature, we're going to do the paint it all black and then go in and do some layering with some lighter grays and white. Um, so kind of one of those things where when you do this with the more uh, medium humanoid miniatures, I find doing the black base color going in with the lighter grays and the whites helps enhance the details and then the type of paint we're going to be doing with this as opposed to what we did here with like the full layering of the paint itself not watered down we'll do a glaze approach for this miniature uh, which means we thin out the paints and let that under coating the shadow layers basically show through um, which is just another fun way to paint minis so yeah we're going to do that with this particular mini so basically i see a tiefling and i want to paint her black <laughs> The whole thing. The whole thing. The well, and that's, that's perfect because we got about 10 minutes, maybe and a little bit less, it. and that's kind of the perfect amount of time. Yeah. Uh, Here's my black. We have so many blacks right now in the paints. I'm like, black wash, black right. pudding. I need the black. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, it is worth thinning the paint out if it is coming out like a toothpaste or a thick ketchup. You don't want that. You want to thin those out just because we are doing so many layers underneath. So it's better to just sort of let this be a little bit thinner, like the consistency of warm maple syrup, as I like to use as a reference, because hopefully everyone has encountered maple syrup at one point in their life. <laughs> Listen, we work for a bunch of Canadians. Well, Everybody. that too. Yeah. We that are... too. Or like... um skim no skim milk is glaze uh like a nice uh cream yeah that makes sense yeah. like a light cream a light cream exactly yeah oh my god speaking uh, of cream i have probably. i have a point so i was watching some reels and there was this <laughs> mom you. let me preface let me Once. preface there is a point to this because you're gonna be listening like what are you doing um so there's this mom who is talking with her two two kids one's probably like three the other one's probably just about two um, based on how they looked in the reel. And she's holding up a can of whipped cream, like the pressurized spray can style. Yeah. And so she holds this can up to her kids and she goes, sweetie, what's this called? And the little girl looks at her mom and she goes, <gasps> <laughs> and then the younger child <laughs> comes up and she goes, honey, what do you call this? And the little boy goes, <laughs> and I'm like, well, they're not wrong. Nope. It is so hysterical and so on the mark anyways cream <laughs> that's what there you go here. cream i had to share there, there i knew there was going to be there yeah. is going to be some some way yeah. to connect the two wait until they learn what a modem is and start making modem oh noises. my god <laughs> yeah right uh governor explosion wants to know uh mm -hmm. two questions actually do the idol champions artists have socials where i can follow uh, not all of them, but some of them do. Some of them do. I'm trying to remember offhand because uh, sketching hour, usually we ask the artists right. to. Um, I know Anita posts pretty often on hers. I believe it's Anita, Anita Artlet. Anita Artlet, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm blanking on some of the others. So we have two art shows on Wednesdays. Uh, one is at three o'clock Pacific, which is called Sketching Hour, mm -hmm. in where uh, I'm I'm basically the the host and wrangler, as two artists from our wonderful uh, team join. We roll on some rolling tables, and it's a a monster, an adjective, and a cute animal, and then the artists spend oh, forty five minutes <laughs> literally creating something out of. Oh, hi, kitty. <laughs> He's a cute animal, and she's like touching my leg. Like, can I come up, please? It's it's about that time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, they they spend you know about 45, 50 minutes and create a new creature out of those prompts. Um, and you can you can see the results of those on the Discord, Discord.gg slash Idol Champions, because we do have a sketching hour channel. Um, yes. And so at the end of that 
Um, so Michelle is kind of our anchor, <laughs> our anchor artist has oh, been there since the beginning. And then um, we have a rotating cast of other artists who join us uh, for that second seat. And towards the end of the show, I usually ask, hey, you know, tell us where, where we can find more of your amazing art. Um, and then also on Wednesdays at noon Pacific, there is a show called Art Omancy, which has Mars as the the host and Cat as the artist. Uh, and the two of them are the the regularly scheduled people on that show. And uh, Cat usually is drawing uh, characters from the game. Uh, often in in line art, black and white kind of stuff. It's a little bit more of a laid back show simply because if they don't finish in one episode, they'll just have another. They're kind of like this show in where if we don't finish a mini, yeah. we're like, oh, we'll just finish it next week. It's that's that's not the, the you know, hurrying is not the point. Yeah. Um, and so you can check them out and i believe they've got some socials as well but i'm i am i'm sorry all artists cats i'm is, blanking on your socials cats i always um i want to say it's something skeleton oh yeah ske ske skelly vein skelly mm -hmm. i don't want to send people like to the wrong yeah. thing that's just it and and a lot of it has been changing recently because you know not everybody is on all of the socials and some people exactly. have decided to move to different ones. So, yeah. uh, so to answer your question, kind of, yes, most of our artists are on social media somewhere where they post occasionally. Yeah. Um, and there are and some then, who just you know respectfully they don't have social media. So yep, which yeah, I can I can, I get it I get it for sure. Right? Um, and then question two was, what's a good way to transition from digital only TTRPG to in person? What do I buy first? Um, oh, interesting question. So a lot of digital stuff you can still use in person. So if you've say been using D and D Beyond, all of that stuff, as long as you've got a phone or a tablet mm -hmm. or something, it it doesn't go to waste. You can still use it. Uh, I know a lot of people who play in person who still use the uh, digital character sheets and still roll digitally, including me. Um, as for in person, there's honestly not a lot that you need, uh, especially if you're going to run what's called theater of the mind yeah. in where, uh, especially combats, you you don't have like the minis and the maps and everything. You just describe what's going on and the, the group works together to keep an idea of where everybody is in their heads. Um, that's how I like to run my games. And uh, the good thing about that is you don't need all the stuff. And also the, I find it's a little easier to yes and in a battle because yeah. if someone in the middle of the battle it says, oh, is there a chandelier in this room? It's suddenly there's a chandelier. Yeah. And I can just make it happen because it's in my head anyway. Um, so yeah, really all you need to play in person or online is you need uh, dice and a character sheet and the rules. Uh, if you don't have any of the books, you can get the basic rules for free on uh, the D&D &D rules. I'm blanking on where that specific... Uh, PDF is located, but I believe you can go to dndbeyond.com and the basic rules are there, uh, which gets you all of the basic rules you need, plus um, characters and lineages and everything you need to play. And that's kind of it. And then after that, it, it turns into what does your group want and what is helpful to uh, your DM. And mm -hmm. some people who love using the maps and the minis and the, uh, the terrain and all of that, then all right, so what do you want to uh, to get? Do you want to just get one of those? Uh, there are the mats that you can dry erase on yeah. if you want to keep it nice and simple. Uh, some people have uh, bought a bunch of terrain from all sorts of places. Uh, people will get minis from WizKids. People will get minis from you know their friendly oh, local a game whole store. Bunch of, yeah, exactly. So. So to start playing is very, 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 very cheap. Uh, I mean, quite if frankly, not, you could start playing with wrap paper and M and M's. Yep, L literally. Yep. Uh, I I also recommend M and M's are good because when you defeat them, you can eat them. Uh, I also recommend uh, gummy bears, 
especially since you can get like vegan gummy bears and all sorts of, you know, ones for, for dietary restrictions, and then you get to eat them. Also, if you ever want to throw Tiamat at your players, you can get one of those giant gummy bears that are the size of your head. And then you can eat it, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about snacks. Snacks just become part of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I have printed out um, art on little pieces of paper and use that. Um, mm -hmm. I've used dice. I've, I've used all sorts of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Governor, it's not, you don't have to put on a full production with cosplay oh, and painted no. minis. Or, no, no, no. That is not, it's not a rule of the game. You don't have to have a full out kitted table and, you know, dress the part. You can show up in your comfiest of clothes. Everyone brings a snack, have your notebooks and everything ready, and you can sit around a snack table and still play the game. Yep. Um, what you need is a DM and players. That's what you need. Okay? Seriously. Yeah. Um, and uh, you'll probably find uh, probably a break here or there, depending on how long you play for as well. You will need breaks. <laughs> yeah. I, I usually suggest every two hours at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Um, that is, that might be the one detriment to all of the awesome shows that are out there that are um, playing D&D &D in front of an audience. Because the cool thing about that is I think a lot of people get to see people like themselves playing. People yeah. get to see what the game is like and that it's not as difficult or as daunting. Um, and the vast majority of shows literally do look like a bunch of people, you know, just we're sitting in, in boxes on a screen, but mm -hmm. the virtual table kind of things. But you don't need like some shows put on the whole thing and they have fun with it and they have maps and minis and yeah. all that. Uh, but that is not necessary, and uh, it it, it kind of turns into what you and your group want and need. Yeah. Um, so here is this Tiefling Warlock Mini painted up all in black. I did sort of work around the spell effect. Um, if you got paint on that, that's okay. We have ways of removing it. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so we're going to pick up with this next week, and this is actually good because this means we have the black gets plenty of time to dry before we jump yeah. into doing the various layers next week. Um, so that's gonna be the plan for our 100th episode. We're gonna be painting this tiefling warlock. Don't forget that episode is starting earlier at 10 a.m. Pacific time, as opposed to our usual 12 p.m. Pacific. It is also our 100th episode. Uh, so like we had discussed before, we're gonna do giveaways next week. Um, these are gonna be tangible giveaways, which means this is open to US and Canada, Quebec excluded. Uh, so we're gonna have the WizKids Dandy Nolster's Marvelous Miniatures Jabberwock UPM, that's unpainted miniature. Uh, and one lucky winner will receive that. And then another lucky winner will win the uh, Dandy Nolster's Marvelous Miniatures Hellwash Paint Kit, which comes with everything you need to paint the hell wash, wash, hell wasp. And yes, it comes with the wash. Are, it comes with the wash, it does. Uh, and yes, these are also minis that we have painted in the past on Paint and Slay, so you could follow along with us. Just go to CNE Games YouTube, check out those episodes, and you can paint along. And then, uh, yeah, looking forward to next week for that one. And don't forget, it is the weekend. So this weekend, you have your Heart of Iron weekend. And if you've signed up for the newsletter, you have the free gold Infernal Iron chest uh, to check out. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, yes. I was going to say, since we've had some new people in the chat, when you do sign up for the newsletter, you will immediately get one newsletter, basically a confirmation. But that confirmation yeah. comes with a code to unlock a champion, Hitch, in the game. So yeah, even nice. when you sign up, the the uh, newsletter that we send to confirm that you've signed up for our newsletter gives you something for free. So if this is the first time you're learning about it, go into the game, into settings, uh, pull out the settings menu, and you'll see newsletter. And mm -hmm. you click on that and tell us where, what email you want to send it to, and then hitch. Yay. Exactly. Sorry to interrupt. I just no, I realized as you were talking, I'm like, we've got new people who might yes. want to know about this. So yeah, it's definitely good to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, as Lauren just proved, we send you something every single time there is a newsletter. Uh, you get a free thing, and it is usually only once a week that you get a free thing. But if we reach out to you, it's because there's something important happening in game, and yes, there's still a free thing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, check that one out too. And then 
while you're at it don't forget you still have time for festival of fools this is coming to an end next wednesday on the 27th so you still have time to get in there and unlock Darius and the dark urge along with some other champions too so go in log in check it all out play the game get your champions gotta collect them all and all that goodness and my god you're being so tolerant right now um so that is basically everything we have going on in the game so that wraps it up for today what i'll do and i'm sure lauren's gonna do as well we will post our lovely lizard folk renders on social media tomorrow once they're all nice and dry and ready to go uh, so make sure you check that out over the weekend and until then we will see you next week same show different time but lots to celebrate that's for sure all right and also oh, thank you to gabe so much for uh hanging out with us in the chat and helping out with moderation and getting those questions in the question doc always appreciated always a good thing and i think that is now officially everything i think so so i think we're good We'll see you next week, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye.